How's it going everybody? It's Razine here for Astrophotography and in today's video I'm going to show you how you can reduce star sizes using Affinity Photo. So why would you reduce star sizes? Um, stars are point sources of light across an image and to me they can sometimes detract from the deep sky object that we've worked so hard to take a photo of. And so in this case with the Flaming Star Nebula it's a hydrogen alpha image and the scattering of scar stars across the uh, frame kind of hides the nebula in my opinion. So we'd use star reduction to kind of make the stars take backstage a bit so the DSO can take center stage and pop a lot more. I'm gonna show you two examples of star reduction, one with a lot of stars in the frame like this one and the other one on the galaxy where there's less stars but you'll be able to see the overall effect still in action. So I would do the star reduction about 60% through my workflow once I've done my edits to the DSO and the edits to the background layer individually. And I'm kind of proceeding on from there, going into like final sharpening, noise reduction, um, and uh, color vibrance, etc. That's before all those, I'd do my star reduction. If you want to know how to edit astrophotography images in Affinity, I have a full workflow up there and in the description down below enough talking let's get on with it so the flaming star nebula hydrogen alpha the star reduction base layer is the stamped merged visible layer like i mentioned after all those edits have been done i would merge a visible layer um, and star reduction base would be the result of that star reduction is just a duplicated layer so i would have just gone right click and duplicate. The reason for using the two layer approach is for blending purposes. If I want to make, if the finished result is too much, you can blend it in. So what we're going to do, there's two ways of selecting the stars. I'm going to go to select and you can go the tonal range and highlights. And there's no tolerance slider here. I have said to Affinity, can you add a tolerance slider? Because sometimes it affects the um, nebula itself. That's one way of doing it. I'm just going to use control D or select and deselect that. The other way is select sampled colors and change the model to intensity and then sample a, a star basically. So I'm gonna sample this bright one here and then this is gonna select all the other stars around it. And if you wanna select more stars, then raise the tolerance higher and higher and higher. And if you wanna select less, then raise the tolerance down, lower the tolerance. For me, I think about 30% is fine. Doesn't seem to have selected any of the nebula. A little bit there, but this is fine. I want to grow and feather this selection. Now I want to grow because I'll need to get a bit of the background sky in this selection as well for the feathering purposes. And then feathering just takes that really hard edge off of it. So I'm going to go to select and grow. Make sure circle is picked. And then I'm going to grow only by about two. So we can see now we've got a bit of the background sky in our selections. It has increased the selection of the nebula, but I'm not too worried about that. You'll see why in a moment. I'm going to go to select again and then feather. Feathering takes that really hard edge off of things. I always explain it as it's a gentle slope going into a lake bed rather than a sheer drop off of a cliff face. So it's just a nice gentle transition. I'm probably going to feather this by about three. You'll get a feel of it. I can't really explain how much to feather by. It depends on image scale and how much you're selected. It's more of an experience thing and when you learn and get more familiar with your camera and your telescope combination. But feathering is an integral part. If you miss out feathering, you're going to have a very solid transition and it's probably not the effect you're going for. I say probably because I don't know the effect you're going for. My teaching style is very much teaching you the principles and the tools of what I do. So that way you can apply it to your own images. So I'm not teaching you how to make this picture. I'm teaching you the tools. With this selection in place, there's another two ways you can go about this now. You can go straight to the minimizing section with this selection active, or you can mask this layer. Now with this one, I'm going to actually mask this layer. So with all these stars selected, with the star reduction layer on, I'm going to click mask layer. I'm going to use control D to deselect all this. 
or you could have gone to select and then deselect. Now if I press alt and click the mask, we can see the mask we're working with. And this is one reason why I wasn't too fussed about the nebula that had been selected. There's not much. And if really we want to, we can take a black brush in here and mask that back out. I'm going to make sure I click the thumbnail again of the entire image. And then I'm going to go to filters, blur. And then I'm just going to zoom in a bit. And I'll go to filters, blur, and then minimum blur. So minimum blur is the actual star reduction tool that I use. I'm going to bring the mirrored side by side view up. And then I'm just going to scroll across the image and make sure that I'm happy with the amount that's going on. So one, 0.5, that's a bit too much. So I'm just going to go about 1.2 and maybe even 0.8, 1.2. Again, the amount you uh, reduce the stars by, it's a matter of personal preference. And that's that. Now I can fully admit that this might be bit extreme for a lot of people but this is why we've done the two layer approach because if I switch this off that's before that's after I can just go up to the opacity level and change it to about 66 percent and then begin blending this the higher the opacity the smaller your stars are going to be so I actually want that about 66 percent I think for me And I'm happy with that overall effect. Now here's one uh, fact that the masking comes in handy with. Look at Alpha Origae, the very bright star of the Flaming Star Nebula. It is the Flaming Star. So, it's kind of been dimmed down in the, in the star reduction process. If I click the mask thumbnail here, I take my paintbrush, go to color, make sure black is selected, I can just use a black paintbrush on the flaming star there and that removes it from the mask. So it's not been affected on the star reduction layer. So now you can see that Alpha Origae there in the middle hasn't been selected because it's been masked out. And you could do the same with these, this W of stars, for example, in this specific example. Or if there's like a star cluster in your image and you didn't want to reduce the star cluster, you could paint out and mask the star cluster. So that's doing the star reduction with an image with a lot of stars in it like this one. And you can see, I think you can easily see the visual impact that reducing the star sizes has had. It's really made the DSO pop out and the Flaming Star Nebula has really taken front and center stage. Let's go to the second example now, which is the Leo triplet. So there's a lot less stars in this example less covering the, the galaxies themselves. So this one won't have as much a visual impact as the Flaming Star Nebula, but it still is a nice little subtle change to this image. Star reduction base, I'm gonna right click that, I'm gonna duplicate it, and then I'll call this one Star Reduction. And then from there, I'm just gonna to go to Select, Tonal Range, Highlight. And again, because there's no tolerance slider at the minute, it's kind of selected the cores of these galaxies. So I'm just going to take the free lasso, the free hand selection tool. If that's not available, right click it and then select free hand selection. Holding Alt, or you could click subtract. I'm going to hold Alt and I'm just going to draw around the core of these galaxies to remove them from this selection because I don't want to reduce these cores a bit here on the Hamburger Galaxy. Excellent. Now I'm going to go to select again and I'm going to grow this selection by about two probably is fine. Make sure circular is selected. Mm, no, nope, about three then. That's great. And then I feather this selection again. About three. And I'm not going to bother with masking this layer this time. I mask when I feel like a big part of the image is going to be affected and I'm a bit unsure and I want that bit more control. It doesn't hurt to mask, but in this example, I'm just showing you what happens when you don't. 
So with that selection still active, I'm going to go to Filters, Blur, and Minimum Blur. Bring the side by side up so you can see the difference that's going on. And then I'll go to Select and Deselect to get rid of those marching ants. And now we can just scroll across the screen here and have a look at what difference is doing. It's affected mainly the smaller stars, but it's had an overall effect. So if we go to 1.5, Two, two is very extreme, 0.5, not a lot. I think 1.2 works nicely for this image. The nice thing about this one, it's more of a visual thing. You can keep changing the threshold and the tolerance there until you get something you're happy with. And again, it's a subtle effect. It's lowered the overall brightness of the image. And again, if you don't like this, you can change the opacity to say 50%. And that's even more subtle, but it's just a nice amount. I think for me, 60% works nicely for the Leo triplet, and I'm happy with that. And there you go. That's reducing stars the same way in two different images to give you two different visual results. Using masks as well as not using masks, uh, feathering selection, expanding selections, and the actual minimum tool itself, and as why you would do it, and how to do it. So I hope that you've understood the principles of reducing stars in Affinity Photo and if you haven't let me know down below and I'll try to clear it up for you. Also if you have any other requests for tutorials drop them down below. In the meantime thanks very much for watching if you've enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and if you think it could have been better give it a thumbs down. Thanks very much for watching hope you have clear skies. Keep looking up keep the cameras clicking. I'll see you later.